What's going on guys? Welcome to part two of Spinaraptors on the clock deck. Uh, this one's been very, very fun. We did fairly well uh, in our, well, I say fairly well. We had like about as normal as you, or as ba about as even as you could get. One loss, one win, and a draw uh, for the first time I think ever on recording, uh, which was really fun. Um, so I'm really excited to jump into this again. Hopefully we can get a couple more wins, see how we do. Uh, I really do like this deck. I think it's a fun one. Um, this is a very interesting hand. I'm gonna keep it, but it's a little weird, uh, not gonna lie. There's a very high chance this does not work out, but, uh, I do think we lean on the, the castle here. Okay. Uh, if we can get another black source, we're in Bedevil territory, uh, which is great. Because then we've got Serrated Scorpion with Heartless Act and Bedevil. Perfect. Let's do this. Let's do this. And we'll do this. Let's get them both out there. And now, whatever they play, chances are it's going to be a one-shot deal. We get to Heartless Act and then start swinging in. Uh, unless they just have, like, two Pelt Collectors or something like that. Okay, we can kill that. That's fine. Uh, let's do this. There we go. All right. I really... Stone Coil Serpent is such a good card. It's a frustratingly good card. I have to imagine they have a fairly aggressive hand if they were willing to just kind of play that out, though. Uh, that we can bedevil. That's fine. <clears throat> we're hitting our land drops as well, which is fantastic. Let's get that out of there. We're also devaluing their removal by continuously hitting their creatures. I know we're being aggressive with it, but we are kind of an aggressive deck, so I'm fine with it. Um, at some point here, we may have to, you know, draw a card with Castle Lockthwain just to kind of get a, get us in the right position, but, um, hopefully we can make that work. Sure. Very good. Very, very good. Um, oh. Well, bedevil it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you got it, just keep doing it. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to guess another, ooh, excuse me, another questing beast. Some coffee just spat out of my face. I apologize. Oh no, not a questing beast. A gem razor. What a great card. Gem razor is very, very good. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's just do this. Oops. And we'll pass. This does have trample, which is a little tricky, but... Um, I think we'll be in interesting shape. Oh, wow. Soul Scar, or Soul Seer, excuse me. Look at that art, that's pretty cool. Okay, fair enough. Wow, no attacks. Um, all right, well, let's draw a card. I'm gonna lose a lot here, but... <clears throat> Oh god, we're just not getting lands. <laughs> we could have very easily been at a Chandra by now, um, which would have been great. But to be fair, we would have also lost out on a few of these kill spells, which would have been bad, no doubt. Um, let's get this down. Pass. Ill-gotten inheritance is good, uh, but not great. It's just a bit slow. Uh, and I think that that's kind of the only criticism I have with this deck is that, um, you know, in, you, in a position like this where you just get stuck on lands, it's really difficult when you draw like an ill-gotten gains and that's all you've got. Um, just because it's not really going to do a ton. You know, like it's great to be able to gain a little bit of life, but it's not, it's not really saving you a lot. It does not really matter what we block. This gives us the least amount of damage. We have to block something, so... Alright. What can we do? Not a lot. Worth it. <laughs> uh, so we just lose, right? Yeah, we just lose. They both have trample. Um, unfortunately, a pair of Chandra's stuck in our hand was a pretty big setback. Uh, but it is what it is. Let's go ahead. Let's jump into game two. Let's see how we do. Uh, 
I do really enjoy decks like this, though. I think it's just so fun to to try out something different. We haven't really gotten to play with Captive Audience yet. That's the one card that I would love to like get down and just see what happens, but we haven't been in a position where we actually can. Um, a lot of... I think a lot of the best of one ladder is obviously kind of faster decks, uh, and so that tends to not be an easy place to get to. Um, regardless, though, it's very fun. I like it. Need another black source here pretty badly, but uh, we do have Bone Crusher Giant as kind of a backup option here, so feeling okay about that. If you hear a dog starting to bark, uh, that might be a thing. Just a heads up. Whoops. There we go. Uh, got both Heartless Act and Bone Crusher up, so that's pretty good. Cultivate. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yep. All right. Well. Yep. There it is. There it is. All right. I would stop her, but I can't. Sorry. This is it. This is my life now. Hopefully you guys can actually... I, it'd be weird if I was talking about it and you can't hear it, so... Alright. Let's see what they're gonna do. I'm playing Bone Crusher out here to kind of get a clock going, but I don't know if that's right. Dogs will be dogs. Alright. Let's see what they do. Thassa. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. Um, unfortunately, no land. That seems to be a very regular problem with this deck, which is very surprising to me. This doesn't seem like the kind of deck that would have mana issues. With 25 lands, I mean, you'd think it'd be fine. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, kill it. Kill it a lot. Hits the scorpion. Oh, I see. They get double activations off of it. That's pretty cool. Um, do that. Um, actually, I think we just pass. If they have another Massacre Worm, we need to kill it with Bedevil. <coughs> um, and then next turn, we can just drop, like, a spawn or something. Okay. I mean, that's like fine, not great. I'm just gonna kill it. All right, um. Boom. Uh, enters tapped. We definitely wanna do the enchantment version of this, not the uh, spawn of mayhem. Just in case they can kill the creature, we need to have a backup plan. So this is our backup plan. So I think that that is much better. <clears throat> this is good though. I love this little idea, like getting double activations with Yaruk and Thassa. Super sweet. This is kind of the deck that, or a deck that could really, really go off, which is awesome. Um, but it didn't work this time. Feeling pretty good about this. Obviously, this was a, a fairly clean win. Uh, with all the removal in this deck, it makes it super nice to be able to just kind of point and shoot and say, no, you don't get that. Um, so I really like it. Let's jump into our third and final game. Actually, technically our sixth and final game um, and see how we do. Uh, Raptor, again, I just want to thank you for the uh, the submission here. I really do appreciate it. Anybody that, that would like to submit, um, I know we've got a lot of new decks in there right now that I'd like to look through, but... Anybody that would like to submit, you certainly can. Uh, we'd love to have that. Um, this is... Like, I assume we'll draw something, but this is not a very solid hand, uh, to be honest. Like, Grim Tutor's nice. We don't have a second black source here. Crocs is very nice, though. Um, uh, I think it's right to mulligan. This is better, and I think we just throw Captive Audience back. As much as I, I love Captive Audience, this isn't the hand to keep it. Uh, and we drew another one anyway, <laughs> so guess it didn't matter. Um, Godless Shrine. Huh. Interesting. Um, we pass. 
So is this like Orzhov hate bears? That's interesting. All right. Play something that I can kill with Ben Crusher, please. Mardu, hate bears. Is this like a Winota deck? Could be Winota. Mm, probably not. Um, I'm gonna do this. Uh, that way I can just play this next turn. All right. Ooh, Croxa is also super nice though. Um, mm -mm. No, let's play Bone Crusher here. This gives us a a, a good swing in um, that they need to kind of answer here. Uh, neither one of their creatures can kill it, so they definitely need to. Um, well, that's cool. The fact that everything has three toughness is very annoying. Um, let's do that. This is just like a hate bears deck. I am going to attack in here, see what they do. If they want to kill it, they can. All right. Let's play spawn. This just gives us a blocker here. These things, the the weird thing about this is like, this deck really isn't shutting down anything for us, uh, at least at this point. Um, it's very good, but it's not really doing much, so I don't really care, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Well, that's good. Um, if we draw a lamb, we could potentially cry plus bone crusher. Uh, to get rid of this stupid thing. I think we kind of have to do this, right? Just get rid of that. I'm attacking in here because it really doesn't matter either way. They can block and that's fine. There's, I don't think they should, but they can. Okay. Um, we can't block this anyway, uh, or this, so there was no point in not attacking. If they wanted to take that trade, like, I would 100% have taken that. Um, yep. This does shut down Croxa, I will say, uh, being able to play it from the graveyard. So there is something that they are shutting down with this uh, Cuneros. I don't know. This is a dog. It's Cerberus, man. That's all it is. Okay, they hit a land. Not super exciting. Um, play this. And we wait. This is a very bad position, though. I think we definitely just kind of lose here. Uh, we can't do anything about this. If they've got a kill spell, yeah. Then we can't block this or this, so we just lose. Yep. I guess we don't quite lose. We get to kill this, but, like, I mean, we lose. <laughs> um, and the, this captive audience is good, but it really doesn't do anything. Oh, now we definitely lose. All right. Man. Did not get there. Uh, Raptor. Uh, this deck is fun. Uh, I really do like it. I think it's super, super like high value in terms of what it can do. Uh, and I love the idea of putting someone on the clock. Uh, as you kind of said, the, the ill-gotten inheritance, the Chandra, uh, spawn of mayhem, all those kinds of things team together does equate to a lot of damage every single turn. That's just going to happen. I mean, there's not much you can do about it. Um, other than just kill the stuff, of course, but I just mean if they stick on the field, you don't have to attack. You can literally just kind of sit back, remove stuff on the opponent's side, and then you're good to go. Uh, I really like that idea, um, but I just think it's a bit slow, uh, for best of one at least. I, I don't know about in like best of three or any other format there, but um, I think in best of one, it's just slightly slow. That's all. Uh, it does work pretty well, uh, given that you know a lot of creature decks are going on right now, but I do think... Uh, first and foremost, I would definitely swap out at least either Flame Sweep or Cry, probably Flame Sweep, uh, with Storm's Wrath. Uh, 
uh, just so you get a little bit of a like larger scale board sweep, uh, or maybe even like a uh, uh, a ritual of soot or something along those lines. Uh, just because you know, in that situation, for instance, we had Cry of the Carnarium in our hand. It didn't do anything uh, against that kind of deck where they're they're planning for things that are going to deal two damage because the format really does a lot of that. Uh, I think it's better to have stuff that deals, you know, some that deals two damage, but then also some that deals with bigger stuff. Um, Storm's Wrath also hits Planeswalkers, so there's some upside there as well. Either way, though, I do think with just a bit of tweaking, this could be a very, very contending st standard deck. Uh, I do really like it, but I would definitely play around with it a little bit. Again, I do appreciate the submission. Anybody that wants to, you're welcome to in our Discord, and thank you so much for watching this one. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Uh, we will be playing some more user-submitted decks hopefully very soon, so check those out when they come out, but I appreciate the views, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon uh, in the next gameplay video.